Today we're talking about categorical logic. Later we'll talk about propositional logic. But categorical logic is logic that deals with arguments which are composed of categorical statements. Categorical statements are statements that affirm or deny something about all or some members of a class. So for example, this argument is a categorical argument. All men are mortal. Sasser is a man. Therefore, Sasser is mortal. It's made up entirely of categorical statements. Now, there are four basic forms of categorical statements depicted in this chart. You'll notice that there's a lot of technical terms thrown around here. Just for the record, what I care about you getting out of this unit is not all the technical terms, but I care about you being able to evaluate the validity of categorical arguments, okay? So uh, the terminology is just to help to get us to understand the concepts. So here's the four basic terms of categorical statements. You can have universal affirmative statements, and these are called A statements. Th those say all the S's are P's. S stands for any subject term, and P stands for any predicate terms. You can also have universal negative statements, E statements, and those say that no S's are P. Then you can have particular affirmative statements, I statements. Those say that some S are P. And you can have particular negative statements, O statements, which say some S are not P. Let me give you some concrete examples of these. An A statement would be all diamonds are gems. Uh, an E statement, no diamonds are gems. I statement, some diamonds are gems. And an O statement, some diamonds are not gems. Now, one note about A statements, the, the all diamonds are gems types. When you make an A statement, uh, that doesn't imply that there are actually any members of the subject class. Let me give you an example. If I say that all deserters will be shot, that doesn't necessarily imply that anyone will be a deserter. Maybe there are no deserters and there will be no deserters. Um, all deserters will be shot is just equivalent to the conditional statement. If anyone is a deserter, then he will be shot. Now, all of these statements, A type, O type, E type, I type, they have a lot of different natural language equivalents. Okay, So if I say all horses are mammals, there's a bunch of different ways I could say that. I might just say horses are mammals. That is an A statement. Or I might say, if anything is a, is a horse, then it's a mammal. Now, there's a bunch of different equivalents. I'm not going to go through them all, but you need to look through these so that you understand conceptually why these are all saying exactly the same thing. The same is true of E statements. So if I say, no spiders are insects, that's equivalent to saying, no insects are spiders. <clears throat> or to saying that if anything is an insect, it's not a spider. There's a lot of different ways you can make this. The same with I statements and the same with O statements. Give these a look over. Now, a categorical syllogism is a deductive argument that's constructed entirely out of these categorical propositions. And it's got exactly two premises and a conclusion. So, for example, all comedians are shy people. Some comedians are good actors. Therefore, some, actor, some good actors are shy people. Um, and a categorical syllogism will contain three terms, three class terms. And each will be mentioned exactly twice if it's constructed correctly. So um, in this case, it's good actors, shy people, and comedians. And all the statements are about those classes. Now, here's the action. Here's what we care about. How can I determine whether a categorical syllogism, a categorical argument, is valid or not logically? You could memorize a bunch of really tedious rules. I recommend drawing pictures, namely Venn diagrams, instead. Let me show you how this works. Okay, here's how you diagram each of the four standard form categorical propositions, okay? 
If you want to diagram an A statement, all S or P, it looks like this. You draw two circles that overlap, and they represent the two class terms, the S's and the P's. The shaded part means there's nothing here in this area. White parts mean there may or may not be something here in this area. And if there's an X, that means there is definitely something here in this area. So let me explain. If we say all S are P's, we've shaded all of the area of S that is not overlapping with P. What this is saying is there are no S's. There's no S stuff that is not part of the P stuff. If there are any S's, they are right here in the P overlap area. Okay. Let's look at E statements. No S are P. Now we draw the same two circles, but the way we diagram it is we say there is nothing here in this part of S that overlaps with P. If there are any S's, they're over here. <clears throat> now let's look at I statements. Some S are P. Well, in that case, we put an X right here in the overlap area where S overlaps with P. There's some stuff here that's both. Now, there may be stuff over here. There may be S's that are not P's, right? And there may be P's that aren't S's. But what we do know is that some S's are P's. What about O statements? Some S's are not P's. Well, we just put the X over here and the part of S, which doesn't overlap with P. There may be S's here that are P's. We don't know. What we do know, the only thing we know for sure here, is that there are S's that are not P's. That's the basic idea. Now, how do we use these pictures to determine validity? Hang with me. Okay, if you have an immediate argument, that's an argument with just one premise. And so you would just diagram a single premise with two circles here. Okay. If you're going to diagram a, a syllogism that has two premises, you're going to need three circles. And they're gonna, you're always going to draw the circles like this. You don't have to draw the numbers. The numbers are just to show you the different areas of overlap and so forth. Here's the S circle, the P circle, and then an M circle. Okay, how do you diagram uh, a universal proposition here? Well, let's say you've got an A proposition. All the P's are M's. See what we've done here? We've got a P circle here, and we shade it out all the area of P that doesn't overlap with M. So 6 and 7 are clear. If there are any P's, they're here in this overlap area. Now, we don't know if they're in quadrant 6 or 7 or both. Okay, So maybe they're also S's if they're in the 6 area. Maybe the, the P's are just M's but not S's. Um, whatever. The point is that there are no P's that don't overlap with M. Or what if you wanted to do the E proposition, no S's or M's? You're going to shade out all the part of S that um, in quadrant 5 and 6 that doesn't overlap, that overlaps with M. To say there's nothing here, whether it's in this P area where they all three overlap or whether it's just in the area where S and M converge, there's nothing there. Okay. Now, uh, and then you can see how this works with and this is important, how this works with the particular proposition. So let's say you've got some P or M. That means in the area where P, 6 and 7 is where P and M overlap, right? And we want to say there's some, something here. But this premise doesn't determine whether the P's that are M's are also S's, in which case they would be over here in 6, or are they only 7, are they only M's, uh, and... They're over here in 7. We don't know. Or are they both? So we draw the X on the line when we're not sure to signify the, the P's that are M's may or may not be S's. And then the same goes for O propositions. You're going to draw the X on the line here. Now, okay, how do we use this to determine validity? Well, you, you diagram both of the premises. Okay, so... We got some desired drugs are addictive chemical substances. Some D's are A's. Some illegal drugs are not designer drugs. So some I's are not D's. Therefore, 
Uh, some illegal drugs are not addictive chemical substances. Some eyes are not A's. And you can, with any of these syllogisms, it doesn't matter what the actual class terms are. Just make them letters. Because that what this means, designer drugs, illegal drugs, it doesn't matter for the logic of it. It may matter to the truth of the premises, but not to their logical relationships. Okay, So first let's diagram the major premise. Some D are A. We drew an X right here on the line in, uh, in the overlap area between D and A. There's stuff here, either in 6, 7, or both. And then the minor premise, some I are not D. So we've got I's, which are in the area that doesn't overlap with D, so not in 5 or 6. We don't know. We drew them on the line with A because we don't know whether these I's are A's or not. So that's what we know based on the premises. Now, here's the conclusion. Some I's are not A's. The question we're asking is, is this conclusion necessarily true given what we've drawn here on the diagram? Some, some I's are not A's. So um, are there I's that, are we sure that there are I's that are not in the A quadrant? We're not sure of that at all. This X right here is on the line showing that um, these items could be in one or in two. And if they're in two, then they are in the A area. So that's entirely possible. Um, the, if we want to say that some I's are not A's, we'd have to have an X that was only in the one quadrant or only in the five quadrant. But we don't have that. We've got an overlap here. So it's possible that the conclusion is false. And so it's, the syllogism is invalid. Let's look at another one here. Some B's or E's. Um, we drew an X, and we would first draw the X on the line here. And you'll see why they pushed it over into the 6th quadrant. But it, the X would initially be right here on the line between 6 and 7. And then the second premise, all E's are L's. To diagram that, you shade out all the E areas that are not in the L area. So quadrants 8 and 7 get shaded out. Now the conclusion is that some L's are B's. In other words, there are some things. And now, now pause before I get to the conclusion. Because we know that it, that all E's are L's, and there's no E's in quadrant seven, we push that X exclusively into the six area here, because there it couldn't be over in the seven area. It's got to be in the six area. So we know that there are things in quadrant six. Now the conclusion is that some L's are B's. So the question is, are is there an X? that overlaps with L and B. And yes, there is right here in this sixth quadrant. There is an X right here. These L's are definitely B's. So this is a valid syllogism. Let's, use, let's do one more example here. All the P's are M's. All the S's are P. Therefore, all the S's are, I'm sorry, all P's are M, all S are M, therefore all S are P. This is invalid. Uh, why? Because if you, if you draw on the diagram, you'll see that in order for the conclusion to be true, both areas, 1 and 5, um, would have to be shaded, but they are not. So here's your, uh, the diagram. All P's are M's. That means we shaded out all the P areas that are not M's, and then all S are M, we shaded out all the S that are not M's. Does it follow that all the S's are P's? No. Look, you could have S's right here, and these are not, these are not P's. And so um, it follows, it's not, it's not valid. Um, here's Socrates again. Uh, that's that you can diagram these on your own, but I leave you to to practice those on your own.